Hi, and welcome to Answers News for October 9th, uh, 2017. And it's just the two of us today. So uh, Ken is out in, uh, he gets up in Michigan, uh, speaking yeah. at a pastor's conference up there. Mm -hmm. And so um, we'll be pinch hitting. I'll be pinch hitting for Ken today. Because <laughs> I'm going to try yeah. to do the slides and do the Facebook and... <laughs> I've got the job easy today. Yeah, huh? and talk about the article, yeah, right, so, so we'll see how well I can multitask. So um, uh, for those of you that are following on Facebook, make sure to send lots of emojis so that we can see that you're here and get the reach out further. I know we've got people coming on here, and, <laughs> um, and, and we do have a live audience for those that are watching us on Facebook. Here, so let them know you're here. Let's hear you. Here, clap. All right, there we go. You guys are officially famous. They may not know your name or what you look yeah. like, but you're famous now. You're famous. They've heard, yeah. your, they've heard you. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. So we are going to be talking about, I'm trying to think if there's any fluff and stuff. I don't, Ken's the one that normally comes up You know, with Ken always stuff. has some sort of fluff and stuff. But, I'm trying uh, to think. You know, uh, I, I had my sister come in town this past weekend, oh, okay. so I actually had a chance to go out and uh, take him through the museum, oh, and I got nice. to take him through the ark. And, you know, we're here all the time, but we don't always just get a yeah. chance to go out and take a look at the exhibits and go through. Yeah. So it was kind of nice to do that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we had a great time, and the kids got to uh, have a good time going through. But I remember, uh, you know, on the second day, w there we are, you know, toward the end of the ark, and I remember the kids like, can we have a break yet? Can we... Can we sit down? <laughs> but, uh, you know, it really thing. is. It's a lot of walking over two days. Oh, uh, yeah. how, how many people here in the studio audience uh, have been to the Ark Encounter already? All right. A number. How many are going tomorrow? Oh, oh look there at we that. Go. Yes, yeah. we have quite a few. Most so. <laughs> of them going tomorrow. You know, it's interesting. You know, when we uh, go to the Ark, you know, I've had people who come and they're like, oh, it was such a beautiful day and all that. And I'm like, I'm sorry. You know, I'm sorry it didn't rain. <laughs> you know, they're... There are people who say, I can't wait to go to the ark. I hope it's raining that day. And that makes it a little more authentic. <laughs> that's right. It really does. So. All right. Well, we'll go ahead and get started here. Um, so we got, looks like getting, yep, lots of people are joining here. Um, so we're going to be talking, first of all, about New Zealand's iconic kiwi birds may be losing their sight. Mm -hmm. So they don't need sight necessarily because they mainly are nocturnal. And so they mm -hmm. don't need to see, they just need to be usually hear, touch, you know, smell, yeah. things like that are more um, important. So it's why waste energy on sight, right? If you're not really going to use it and it doesn't really help you. Yeah, I think it kind of surprised the researchers when they were out there finding this and they started finding that, hey, oh, well, look, we found a blind one. And mm -hmm. they thought, oh, okay, that's not a big deal. And then they started finding others that were blind. They're like, oh, well, you know what? Maybe there's something going on here. Right. And, uh, you know, I kind of like research like that when they actually find out, oh, something's going right, on. But, but they tend to call this mm -hmm. evolution. They do. Now, uh, sorry, losing something is not evolution. No. <laughs> I, I know, you know, sometimes people may come up and say, oh, wow, look at that. They gained the ability to not see, you know, to try to make it look like Yay. they gained something, but that's it's kind of backwards. <laughs> well, I always use the example yeah. of, you know, they're trying to sound very positive about it, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that'd be like, let's just say I lost all my money. So I could say I've just lost all my money, or I could say I've gained poverty, right? Either way, I'm poor, okay? I might have a more optimistic <laughs> outlook, but it doesn't change the fact that this is not going to get an organism right. to change into a completely different kind yeah. of organism over eons of time. We know a kiwi, it's a flightless bird. It doesn't, right. it doesn't just uh, go fly. In fact, there's, there's a number of those. You have emus, you have uh, ostrich, you know, it's a very famous mm -hmm. one. And, you know, there, there have been people, you know, wonder, you know, did these things lose the ability to fly as well, you know, over the years? Uh, you know, on our farm, we used to have some of those big white turkeys, you know, uh -huh, that had been sure. bred. And I'm, you look at those <laughs> things, they can, they can waddle <laughs> back and forth. But there, you look at that and you say, there's no way this thing can fly. But, right. you know, if you actually just look back in the past, just from breeding, their ancestors flew brilliantly. Mm -hmm. um, I actually found an article. This is from 1986. So this isn't news. <laughs> this is <laughs> no. back in the day. But, uh, uh, you know, a, a researcher had uh, tracked down an old fossil that was found just before World War II in Germany. And, of course, it kind of became unknown there for quite some time. But uh, it was of an ancient ostrich. And, of course, mm -hmm. they want to throw 50 million years onto the date of the fossil, yeah. uh, which is a problem. But uh, uh, nonetheless, just from looking at that particular fossil, they're like, wow, this thing was more streamlined. It might have actually been able to fly. So they think maybe mm -hmm. ostriches, and it's possible that some of these other birds have lost that ability right. since the time of the flood or since the, at least since the time of the, 
uh, the, the fall going back. So it's interesting to think about those things. But right, you know. and it's, it's just, you know, adaptation. It's not really, it's either adaptation mm -hmm. or it was designed. I don't know how long they've been studying the birds to yeah. really know this. They actually call it regressive evolution because mm -hmm. <laughs> it's going backwards. It's not really progressive or in, in hoping well, anything. Well, they actually said this in this old article. They said, and flightless birds such as the ostrich and kiwi probably evolved backwards. Which is an evolution. That's doesn't help. Sorry, it's not at uh, all. the wrong so direction. We've got lots so. of people on here. I see people from Georgia, Tennessee, the UK, mm -hmm. um, Arizona. Well, in the audience, we have someone from Brazil, someone from go. Canada, yeah. and uh, Mexico. Uh, someone from Mexico, I believe. Yeah. So we got uh, all sorts of countries represented here yeah. today, too. All right, so from the Baptist Press, um, federal judge strikes down Kentucky abortion law. So um, basically, it was a law in the state of Kentucky that you had to um, show the ultrasound to a woman who was thinking about abortion and to have her hear the fetal heartbeat. And so they've decided that that violates the First Amendment rights of that woman. Um, and so that's no longer a requirement in the state of Kentucky. Yeah, apparently uh, they argued that it appears to inflict psychological harm on abortion patients. Well, So I guess the harm to the baby isn't even thought twice about. Yeah. And the sheer fact that they're going to go ahead and murder the baby, you know. That it, should it be the worst harm sort of, of all yeah. on both the mother and the mm -hmm. baby, obviously. And so, um, you know, and I, one of the things I found interesting about this article was it said, and what I'm thankful for is that um, the governor of Kentucky, Matt Bevin, said he would appeal this. So mm -hmm. he's going to try to get this changed. So that is a good thing, and I'm thankful for that. But he said, you know, well, not he said, but one of the things they said in fighting for this to get overturned, they said, well, you know, the, the state of Kentucky is really overreaching into the area of reproductive health care. And I'm like, why is it when it's for the baby, it's an overreach, okay, into reproductive health care? But when it's against the baby, it's, oh, yeah, the government should get involved, the government should mm -hmm. fund this. You it's know, not all seen as these. overreach then, It's yeah. a very much a double standard um, yeah. and just looking out for the, um, the, the woman and not obviously the baby. Yeah. Somebody from UP of Michigan, so... Um, Upper Peninsula. Upper Peninsula, Boy, yeah. getting up there. North Dakota, <laughs> lots of people up north, so... All right, from Fox News, murderer sues Kansas prison for imposing Christian beliefs. So uh, a female um, convicted murderer in Kansas basically says that um, her rights are being violated because um, of things that go on there that are religious activities that apparently... They're either requiring or, you know, wanting people to be involved mm -hmm. in. And she's a Wiccan, which yeah. is a basically a type of witchcraft. And mm -hmm. so, you know, she's upset with the fact that there's some Christianity going on in there, uh, whether it's actually being imposed. I mean, those are questions of the court. But you, you realize that breaking the law, you know, law is a Christian thing. When you break the law, you're right. actually going against a Christian. Thing. When you go to prison, that's actually a Christian concept. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, just the sheer fact that you're in prison, you right. know, that, 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 that's actually based on Christian law. But, you know, as I looked at this, you know, I, I kind of noticed, you know, they're, they're sitting here making an argument as though this is being forced upon them, as though right. Congress has established a law to impose this. But, you know, I, I don't think these, any of these officials were following a law that Congress had, had stated, which is what, nope. what goes back to the First Amendment. So it, it's, it's kind of an interesting case. I'd be curious to see what's going to well, happen. Well, and we were even talking about what rights do you mm -hmm. have when you're in prison. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you've given, you, you're denied a lot of your rights, actually, because you, you don't have get broken to vote. the law. Yeah, you don't you, get you to vote. You can't uh, be part of the press so, and go out and interview people anymore. Yeah, it's kind know, of so interesting that, certain rights. that they, yeah, mm -hmm. that they think they can come up against this and even do this mm -hmm. in the first place. But it would be interesting to see how that you know, turns out. Well, so. you know, look at it from the other perspective, too, you know. I mean, if they're, if they're trying to make this case that, well, you can't talk about Christianity in there, you can't uh, uh, discuss that, well, why can you discuss any of the other religions? Right. I mean, you know, imagine if somebody else got in there and said, oh, well, somebody passed out this evolution book, I'm going to sue them for imposing humanism on right. me. You know, they should be able to turn around and do it the, mm -hmm. the other way toward other religions, well, particularly it's secularism. it's a double standard. <laughs> yeah, once yeah, again. Can. If it's for Christianity, they're yeah. against it. You know, that's, yeah. that's, the, that's the case. I mm -hmm. mean, the gospel is offensive. So well, you know right. what I noticed, too, here? The American Humanist Association, they joined with the lawsuit. So you have a Wiccan mm -hmm. and, a, and a secular humanist joining together on this. Right. It's fascinating. We see people with totally opposing worldviews, totally different religions. Boy, they're more than happy to go mm -hmm. side by side yeah. to oppose uh, anything that's Christian, usually. Yeah, not surprising. Yeah. All right, so this next one. A giant coconut-eating rat was discovered in the Solomon Islands. So <laughs> when I read this, I could not help but think of the Princess Bride. Okay? 
the oh, rodents, yes. the rodents of unusual size, the <laughs> R-O-U-S's. Okay, if you've seen that movie, um, they talk about those. <laughs> and so it turns out they're real. Um, <laughs> these these rats are a foot and a half long and 20, no, two, oh, I'm reading that wrong, 2.2 pounds. But a, a foot and a half long. If that yeah. rat comes at me, I'm running the other way. I'll now, I've seen some pretty much. good sized cats. You know, I grew up on a farm many years ago. And uh, one of the things we would do, and this was back in the old days, you know, we, well, there was pig starter and pig grower, and, you know, it'd make your, your pigs grow big. Mm -hmm. Essentially, that was back in the days when, you know, you just threw a whole bunch of steroids at the pigs, really what that is. Yeah. And so the pigs would grow quick and fast. Well, the rats would get in there. Uh -huh. And I remember seeing rats come out of there, and, oh. and these things were huge. We'd send the cats down there, the cats would go running, like, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> So yeah. these things are big. And so they didn't use to, there had been rumors that they existed, but then they were actually cutting down mm -hmm. a tree there and one ran out and they were able to see it for the first time and they've now yeah. found more of them. And it's, it's called a Vika, V-I-K-A. And it's in the Solomon Islands is yeah. where they found this specifically. And yeah. it can bite through a coconut. So it has these amazing, yeah. sharp, really sharp, I don't big think, do, teeth. do we have the image to show for this? We don't have this? the we image. We do not have, have the image. There, but. These things have some pretty vicious looking teeth. And, and I'll, I'll at least hold it up. I doubt anyone can see this very so well. See, it's like huge. Yeah, they got some. If you just saw this in right. the fossil record, and let's say we didn't uh, you know, see didn't the know actual animal, mm -hmm. you might think, wow, this is a vicious meat-eating animal because it's got these sharp teeth, but actually it's purely vegetarian. And that's reminiscent of... of you know, the, the fall with sin. Right. You know, originally all the animals were vegetarian according to Genesis 1 verse 30, mm -hmm. but as a result of sin in Genesis chapter 3, uh, you know, that's when death and suffering came into the world. We yeah. start to, uh, animals start to eat other animals. We see all that sort of thing uh, going on. And, uh, you know, we've had people ask that question about dinosaurs with sharp teeth or other animals. They right. say, well, you know, th there's no way these things could have been vegetarian. Yeah, they could have been. Sharp mm -hmm. teeth simply mean that they have sharp teeth. Right. Okay, so this thing could I mean, have torn I mean, if you're going to get into a watermelon or a coconut, you're not using a spoon. You know, you're using something sharp. I might be able to use a spoon to get in the watermelon. I don't know. Okay. But, but, the, but the, you know, this is why they were designed that way, so they could eat the things that God had created. That's right. Well, even spiders are known to eat pollen. And, right. And, you know, a lot of animals that we, we sometimes think of as eating meat, like sharks, mm -hmm. you know, they'll eat kelp and things like that. You know, so they do have that ability. Right. And uh, it, it's, uh, that's and pretty it, neat. What's interesting was, even though how they got to the Solomon Islands, in the first place it uh -huh. said they probably wrapped it there on vegetation now what's interesting about that is um, when we talk about after the flood how organisms got to the various continents mm -hmm. and areas we talk about them possibly rafting on vegetation because there's a lot That's of debris yeah. left from the flood and we get mocked out for that okay <laughs> but yet the evolutionists can say it and yeah. it's perfectly it's perfectly okay how they got there supposedly yeah. so yeah, a lot um, of animals went to a lot of parts of the world. You know, a lot of times people took animals mm -hmm. uh, and dropped them off. You know, the Romans were, were very well known for dropping animals off in very various places and trading animals. Right. And, uh, you know, if, if rats weren't all over the world, we took them there at the age of exploration. They hopped off our boats all over the place. For all we know, you know right. some of these things could have hitched a ride as well. Imagine those things on your boat. <laughs> well, now, the question is, how big were they when they came to the That's islands? True. Because a lot of times what happens on islands is you get some really some unique ones conditions. Either ones things get really big or they get really small. They tend not to be somewhere in between, and it's, mm -hmm. it's um, an yeah. effect called Foster's Rule or Island Effect. So these got really big, which yeah. I am not in favor of. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, but imagine finding that under your kitchen sink. <laughs> But the changes are not evolutionary. You know, they keep throwing that yeah. word in there. And the changes are just adaptation, you know, yeah. to they had the ability to still probably yeah. had some decent sized teeth when they came. Mm -hmm. Maybe over time, you know, right. those that had the bigger teeth were favored because they could get into mm -hmm. the coconuts better. Maybe there wasn't. It's not like they have right. a lot of choices where they're at on an island. Mm -hmm. And so those survived and you right. got they got bigger. The teeth got mm -hmm. bigger over time and maybe the organisms. Themselves. That's right. What did the rats change into? Rats. A rat. Rats yeah. changing into rats is an That's evolution. It. That's not oh. evolution. Yeah. All right. So people are quoting Princess Bride now on the, <laughs> fi on the Facebook uh, Any, feedback. Your rodents of unusual peanut? size, I don't think they exist. So um, I know I personally am, yeah, as you wish. So they keep just quoting it. So. Oh, yeah. And we knew that would happen. All right. Uh, this next article, what if dinosaurs survived? All right. Mm -hmm. So um, this was desert news. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they said you're walking down the street on a sunny day. When a large shadow falls over you, over you, you look up and a winged dinosaur soars in the sky. 
Now, what's mm. the problem with that? Well, first off, a, di <laughs> a dinosaur is actually defined as being a land animal that has right. one of two hip structures. Right. So any of those winged reptiles, you might think of pteranodons and pterodactyls, by technical definition, they're actually not considered a dinosaur. Right. They'd be a flying reptile or, or what a lot of times they would have been called just simply a dragon. Right. I mean, that's... Uh, uh, yeah. The word dinosaur is a new word. Most people don't realize that. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until the 1840s a Christian man named right. Sir Richard Owen uh, called it dinosaur, which means terrifying or terrible lizard. Mm -hmm. So, you know, by definition, those wouldn't have been that anyway. Right. Now, I, w I want people to step back and realize something else here, too. You know, this is talking about, you know, wow, what if an asteroid came in and struck the Earth and killed all the dinosaurs? Boom. Now, what would happen if they were still mm -hmm. around? Now, here's the problem. Half the evolutionists out there believe that dinosaurs evolved into birds. Birds. So they would say, you look up, you see one of those ugly looking vultures. Well, they're beautiful when they're flying, though. <laughs> but whenever they're swirling around up there, they would say that is a dinosaur. Right. So y you see, what's happening here is you've got two different groups that believe two different things when it comes mm -hmm. to dinosaurs. Mm -hmm. And they actually oppose each other. A lot of times people don't realize that when they're reading these articles. Right. And so, you know, personally, if dinosaurs were still alive, um, I, I don't know. I think, I think they'd be hunted to extinction. They'd probably come close. <laughs> I don't want T-Rex in my backyard. We hunt um, all sorts that of That would they, be pretty scary. They would be on the endangered species. <laughs> yeah. though, <that's> right. <laughs> I think they would be. Well, I always thought, boy, you know, if they survived, you know, at least until recent times, mm -hmm. uh, more than likely, uh, yeah, they would be hunted. Uh, I, fact is, I bet there would be dragon legends all over the place. Yeah. I bet they would have all sorts of ancient accounts and descriptions of them while they were still alive. In fact, they'd probably still be called dragons because we wouldn't have had, had the requirement of actually uh, right. naming them dinosaurs. And guess what? We actually Sorry find that. that. Mm -hmm. We find the legends. Yep. We find the dragon uh, accounts and so forth. And, you know, uh, that, that's what we expect. But it goes to show that these animals actually survived the flood. They came right. off the ark. They've been living... Uh, they've been describing a lot of these uh, petroglyphs that we mm -hmm. find around the world. We find Cave them in drawing. ancient accounts mm -hmm. and uh, historical accounts. And they've died out in more recent times. Right. I mean, and now all of a sudden people say, oh, nope, they're a myth. They're done. So, you know, but that's purely yeah, random. So they can contemplate that all they want. It actually yeah. has happened to some degree. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. We had somebody watching from Denmark. In Denmark. Europe, so, yeah. All right. Neat. Okay, um, from the new scientist, secrets of secrets of butterfly wing patterns revealed by gene hacking. Okay, so this is cool mm -hmm. to me because I'm a geneticist. So basically what they did was they took butterflies and they removed um, through this gene editing system called CRISPR. They actually went in and removed a specific gene to see what effect it would have on the butterflies, which is really neat to be able to do this. And, and it totally changed. You can, whoops, if I could like advance here. I'm being there you go. Kid. There you go. Uh -oh. So on your right. You really are filling in for I Ken. know. <laughs> on your right is what happens. Like you're, you're seeing how on the left, you know, you see that's the normal wing pattern. That's one organism. On the right is another organism that the gene's been removed. And you can see the pattern. Well, it's kind of not there. You know, it's just mm -hmm. really kind of see-through. And so they think this gene is, is a master in uh, gene, basically responsible for how butterflies have different stripes and dots and patterns. And, mm -hmm. But what was interesting about this article was, and, and they say, in one point, they say, how do you make stripes and dots? How do you make complexity? How do you fine-tune a given feature during long evolutionary timescales? And I'm like, you don't. <laughs> you don't make complexity. Yeah. Complexity is it's designed. Bizarre. It doesn't come yeah. by random chance over eons mm -hmm. of time. And you can see they're really struggling with that throughout this whole article because the reason for studying butterfly mm -hmm. wing patterns is how do things make patterns at all? Because mm -hmm. that's what we, our bodies are patterned a certain way. So how did patterns evolve in the first place? Right, just it's to be able complex. To see it. it is, it's quite complex yeah. when you look at it. You know, one of the things they say in here is CRISPR allowed us to not only describe that this gene has evolved multiple roles within a single species. They start, see, they have to throw the evolution in there. Right, they always have to Even though it has absolutely there. nothing to do, that's almost like a red herring. They're, let's just throw some uh, evolution in here. Right. And it, it's meaningless to the actual discussion at hand. But, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it, they even said we're trying to understand where we come from and how. We don't really know 
we don't really know how all these patterns develop. And, mm -hmm. it, and they're just struggling. Like, how could this complexity have come about? I mean, it looks mm -hmm. designed, but they know from their worldview it can't be designed. It has mm -hmm. to have come about this now, way. Now, here, here's a, a big picture thing of what's going on. You know, using this uh, CRISPR, you know, which is a gene editing tool, we can do experimentations on plants and some animals and things like that. You know, we're given dominion over the earth to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. And, of course, I think we have to do that with certain amounts of caution sure, as sure. well. Oh, yeah. But look what they say here, the very last line. Some researchers are experimenting with tweaking the genes of human embryos. Yep, that's a whole. That's what CRISPR can do. And now CRISPR all of a sudden, has been used. it becomes mm -hmm. a, a, yeah. a pretty serious moral issue right, right there. You know, when people are starting to do that sort of thing. And yeah. So we've talked about that on Answers News. I think was it last a couple of weeks yeah, a couple ago. Weeks that's ago actually sometime, happened yeah, in the state of Oregon. They've 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 actually mm -hmm. edited some human embryos, their genetic makeup. Now, so. I want you to understand something. That's, uh, that is considered before conception. Uh, many people out there don't realize that the word conception has been redefined uh, mm -hmm. by the medical establishment. And right now, when a, it used to be when a sperm and egg came together, that was conception. But they've redefined that. That is now fertilization. Conception is now they have to combine, they have to move down, and they have to implant. So it has to be implantation. Right. Mm -hmm. So now all of a sudden people can do all sorts of experiments right. on human babies without it. They claim it's before conception. Most right. people don't realize it's, it actually is, mm -hmm. you know, classically conception. Um, so that caused a lot of problems. That's where the morning after pill became legalized and so forth. A lot of people don't realize that's just a, a, a quick uh, form of abortion that's yep. uh, occurring that's out there. So. So we had uh, somebody here from Sri Lanka um, on here watching, mm -hmm. and somebody asked this: Did the animals, in in relation to butterflies, mm -hmm. did the animals on the ark include insects? Oh, that's mm. always a fun one that we debate a lot around here. That is. Um, yeah. We have some good articles on our website that talk about that. Actually, number one, they would have easily been able to fit based oh, on yeah. the number of kinds. They, and that I always sort of say thing, they take up like this much space. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they don't. They don't take much Not space. Not a problem. But, you know, one of the things, the, the Bible gives some qualifiers. It was the air-breathing, land-dwelling animals that were on board the ark. And mm -hmm. it said they breathe through their nostrils. Right. That uh, was one of the other things. Well, insects don't have nostrils. Uh, they right. actually kind of breathe through their exoskeleton. They Spiracle do things differently. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and it's possible that a lot of these things could easily survive outside the flood. In the same right. way that fish can survive outside the flood, right. a lot of uh, insects can lay their eggs or survive on driftwood and things like that. Yeah. Uh, but... Uh, so we you don't know, that, really know. There's a number know. of factors in there. It's a great yeah. question. They could have fit if they needed to. Yeah. Um, though it's it's not entirely necessary. Yep. But yep. we'll let some of the other uh, researchers out yeah. there uh, debate <laughs> that subject further. All right. Um, this next one from WorldNet Daily. Uh, good riddance. Pentagon banishes left hate attack dog. So um, basically, this is talking about the the Pentagon has officially I got it up there disassociated okay. itself from um, completely from the Southern Poverty Law Center. And we've talked about the Southern Poverty yeah. Law Center quite a bit on um, Answers News because they themselves are really a hate group. I mean, they, they, <laughs> they are in the business of they hating kind of lots of other groups of the Particularly family groups, Christian yes. groups. They really, yeah. you know, they would put them, you know, right up there right next to terrorist organizations. They have uh, a hate list, basically, yeah. of what they call hate groups. Mm -hmm. And the problem is when they, when they designate somebody as a hate group, then places like Amazon won't allow them to participate in their um, donation programs. Mm -hmm. And so it writes them off, basically. Mm -hmm. And um, the D. James Kennedy ministry has recently been added to their hate list. Mm -hmm. American and so Family they're Association suing. has dealt mm -hmm. with it. Family yep. Research Council is on there. So, mm -hmm. uh, but D. James Kennedy ministry is actually suing the, S uh, the Southern Poverty Law Center to mm -hmm. get off the list. But yeah. this is good. This is good to see. Yeah, basically back in uh, 2014, uh, the Department of Defense actually stopped using uh, the SPLC information uh, in their training. Mm -hmm. And right. what, what they've done now, they, they've just completely pulled it off, said, hey, we're not going to use it at all because they realize the issues that are involved mm -hmm. in that. I mean, the fact is it was even political groups that would essentially disagree with them. They would just label them as haters and bigots right. and so forth. And so, you know, it was it was kind of a, you know, they were doing the very thing that they were trying to oppose initially. Yeah, they and, really do. It's and really so that's uh, two sides. And, yeah, and people standard. are recognizing it. You know, a lot of people mm -hmm. have been stepping away from them saying, well, boy, we can't trust you at all. Yeah. And so, uh, well, and a lot, goes. what the problem is, the list has been used by other people as a, a, a target list, mm -hmm. you know, like who should we go out and cause violence to? Right. And they, and they kind of, they, um, they, 
encourage people, unfortunately, to do those kinds mm -hmm. of things against those groups. So yeah. um, basically, it's okay to hate the hate groups. Is, is yeah, it really is a hate and, group. And they, they like hate to hate other people. Worse, so. <laughs> so, but remember, uh, even the concept of hate, love, hate, those are Christian concepts are. right yep. off the bat. You know, those only exist if the Bible's true. Right. You know, if there's no God, there's no right and wrong. There is no such thing as hate. Keep mm -hmm. that in mind. Yeah. There's no such thing as love either mm -hmm. uh, in that instance. You know, those are predicated on the Bible being true. And we sometimes don't think about that, but that's actually what it goes back to. Right, yeah. This is Happy Thanksgiving to our Canadian friends. So is it? It's Thanksgiving in Canada, okay? Because we don't it? think about that here in the U.S. That's so. right. That's yeah, and right. it's Columbus Day here. U.S. has its own holiday today, Columbus mm -hmm. Day. But. Yeah, today is Columbus Day. I yeah, really it thought is. Much of it. There was our fluff and stuff. We could have <laughs> talked <laughs> about talked that. about Columbus Day. Yeah, Columbus rediscovered. Now. now, of course, other people found the Americas. You know, we, we right. know the Vikings had come over at one stage. Native Americans found it. Yep. Um, uh, you know, we have some ancient records, a some other, other groups. Asians may have found some Yeah, Asian some of the Chinese have, uh, have yeah. it on some ancient maps yep. and stuff. So, so uh, you know, it wasn't that it wasn't there. What, what Columbus did was when he came over to what we call the West Indies or the Caribbean, mm -hmm. he went back and told everybody. And everybody's yeah. like, oh, look, uh, look at going. all this. Let's go. <laughs> so, uh, yep. you know, that's why a lot of people uh, yep. have that. Celebrate so. that. All right, from the Washington, Washington, okay, I can't say that word. <laughs> Washingtonian. <laughs> from this, from this uh, news place, um, the Museum of the Bible will probably be a big hit, but it doesn't belong near the mall. And the mall is in D.C., where we have a lot of places like the Smithsonian and, and those That's other right. types yep. of museums Museum and, and tourism sites there. Mm -hmm. And so this guy is obviously, I mean, he's, he's I don't know if he's <laughs> he, an atheist. He's quite intolerant, I think. He's quite intolerant. <laughs> we don't know if he's an atheist or an agnostic or what exactly he is, but he's not a big yeah. fan of the Museum of the Bible, um, which yeah. is going to be an amazing place. Um, mm -hmm. We here, at, well, bo at both the Ark and the Creation Museum, we have exhibits from Museum of the Bible. Um, that, they're um, incredible, too. Yeah. I mean, the design, yeah, you know, what they've done. It, they're it's amazing, awesome. and they're really neat mm -hmm. to see um, at both locations. Mm -hmm. they, they, they rotate here at the museum. Museum. Right. Um, but they're going to be opening up in November, just next month, mm -hmm. uh, five exhibit floors, 430,000 square feet. Um, they've got some amazing artifacts like fragments of the Dead Sea Scrolls mm -hmm. and the Greek papyruses. And yeah, some fascinating oh. artifacts. Oh, I, mean, just I, I believe the, you know, the family that did this, uh, the, Green, the family, Green family, which is mm -hmm. uh, who owns Hobby Lobby, they are the largest private collector of Bible manuscripts. I think they have more than the British Museum. And mm -hmm. you know, uh, right. the, the British got a hold of things, you know, for a long time, mm -hmm. but um, you know, that's just fascinating. Well, the author of this, uh, Rob Bruner, um, you know, he actually describes himself as, an, as a non-believer, but he says he was intrigued by it. Right. But he also says, you know, it's going to be controversial, entertaining, educational, and ridiculous. So bear that in mind. You know, this is the way sometimes yeah. unbelievers are looking at, wow, something as fascinating as how the, the Bible has influenced culture, uh, Western mm -hmm. civilization, and seeing some of these incredible manuscripts. Right. Uh, but he doesn't like it because he says, you know, the size, the budget, and the location will make it hard to distinguish from Washington's famous tourist attractions. <laughs> so he's afraid that the people will just see it as another, you know, as part of, like, the government, as part mm -hmm. of, you know, what's being um, endorsed, Even though it's so private. To speak. Right, yeah. right. And so he doesn't like that because mm -hmm. he says... Museums on and around the mall have always represented a distinctly nonpartisan space. And I'm like, mm, not necessarily not really. nonpartisan. Like, <laughs> well, well, he said he felt, uh, you know, uncomfortable with the whole endeavor. You know, right. well, a nonbeliever mm -hmm. probably would. But, uh, you know, he, he's making this assumption, well, all this other stuff is nice and neutral. Well, it's actually not nice and neutral. No and one of his thing. examples is the Natural History Museum's Triceratops uh, skeleton, for example. Mm -hmm. Now, guess what? You know, er everybody likes the skeleton. The skeleton is great. Right. But as soon as you see the atheistic and the humanistic interpretation of it, basically naturalism flowing mm -hmm. into that, do you realize Christians, they don't like that either? Yeah. You know, we'd rather see people start with the Bible to look at these subjects. I mean, right. that's, that's the way to look at a lot of this. Yeah, yeah. So. So there's no such thing as neutrality. I mean, he's like, well, I'm mm -hmm. going to ponder the cosmos in my own secular way. That's still <laughs> religious. That's, that, I mean, yeah. atheism or not believing in God is just as religious as believing in God. Right. It's a belief system. Right. And so there is no such thing as yeah. neutrality, even though he'd like to think that. So. Yeah. All right. Our next story is um, extinct Dinosovans from Siberia made stunning jewelry. Did they also discover... Australia. <laughs> so for those of you who may not be familiar with Denosimans, um, they are discovered, oh, back, it's, it's 
been a while. It's oh, been yeah. a few years. Oh, yeah, we basically don't ago. have a lot of fossil evidence on them yet. Um, we have some, but they were able to extract the DNA from a tooth, or I think a tooth or a finger bone mm -hmm. or, something, or something, and be able to look at their DNA, and it's very much like human DNA. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's very similar. And what we have found is that some of their differences are found actually in certain, um, in Australian Aborigines and yep. Melanesian populations, That's um, more so Guinea, than they yeah. would be in like Caucasian or Europeans. And so mm -hmm. the idea is, well, if that DNA is there, then they were, I mean, we believe mm -hmm. they're fully human, just like Neanderthals are fully human, yep. you know, all they of that. They were just people, yeah. Yeah. Now, of course, they want to assign a date to them at 65,000 years ago, and of course, you have to question those dates. Right. Uh, but the secular world doesn't. That's almost like their scripture. You can't question that stuff over there. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's interesting. They said that, uh, you know, their ultimate fate was extinction. But then the very next line, they said, yet remarkably, their DNA lives on in the aboriginal people <laughs> and so forth. So that means they didn't go extinct. It means their descendants are still alive uh, even today. Right. But, uh, you know, as I started to research this, you know, I've done a little research, you know, in this book, uh, The Tower of Babel, uh, which I did uh, quite a bit. And I was looking at some of the different people groups. So, you know, obviously I looked at the uh, Australian aborigines and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And we comment on these. Uh, cultures all over the world actually kept track of much of their own history. We have ancient maps and so forth. In fact, when I was in Australia, uh, there was a book that I picked up down there called Was Australia Charted Before 1606? And it shows you a number of ancient maps here uh, where you know people did find at least the north coast and some of that. Some of that was mapped. Uh, one of the maps actually called it Southern India. Another called it uh, Java Minor. Mm -hmm. You know, Java Major was the island uh, that we call Java today. And, uh, you know, as I started to study that, these guys are struggling to say, well, how did these people up here in Siberia interrelate right. with people down in Australia? Because that's where Denisovans were first found, was mm -hmm. in Siberia. So how do you get all the way from northern Russia all the way down to Australia? Right, and they're thinking in terms of Stone Age, 65,000 right. years ago. How did these guys they're connect? They're not smart. They're, right, they're the caveman, you know, the, the, the brutish caveman, thought, right. the brutish caveman, yeah. Yeah, brutish, not British, right? right. Brutish. Brutish, I British. said brutish, <laughs> not British. Okay. But, uh, you know, this isn't a problem when you think biblically, mm -hmm. okay? After the flood, you have the Tower of Babel. People are intermixing right there right off the bat as they go to different parts of the world. A lot of these cultures, even though they were distinct and separated, they still had contact with each other. They still traded right. with each other. They were related, you know, mm -hmm. when you step back and think about it. The farther away from that you get, of course, you know, you lose some of those connections and you have wars and, and all sorts of different things. But it makes a lot more sense, you know, given that time frame and given that history. Now, one of the things they said in here was 65,000 years ago is when people first came to Australia. Now, I, I remember reading some of that kind of stuff years mm -hmm. ago, and I talked about it in the book, The Tower of Babel. Now, in 1788, when they started to fill the continent of uh, Australia and uh, start to populate some of that, they actually did estimates of how many Aborigines were actually in Australia as well as down in Tasmania. And it was estimated right at about 300,000 mm. people all total. Now, that number really struck me. Because if you look at Iceland's history, we know when Iceland was first populated, the first people went there to colonize in the year 874 A.D., and in the year 2016, just you know, a year ago or so, uh, they actually just broke 300,000 people. That's 1,132 years it took to get mm -hmm. 300,000 people. Apply that down here, okay? Yeah. In Australia, in 1788, there's 300,000 people. Wow, you go back uh, 1,132 years, that would put them somewhere between 600 and 700 mm -hmm. A.D. when they started to populate Australia. Right. That's nowhere near 65,000 years. Right. It just didn't make sense by the numbers yeah. when I started to look at that. You know, when you think in terms of the biblical history, this stuff makes a lot of sense. It really does. And, and even if you, and again, we're trying to abolish the idea of the brutish um, caveman because these mm -hmm. people, they discovered jewelry. They discovered tools. They were intelligent. They knew how to build ships. They could go from point mm -hmm. A to point B. Noah you know, was a master it, shipbuilder. So was his sons. Right, right. You know? So it really they gives a much better picture of ancient man than what the evolutionists mm -hmm. have come up with. That's right. They were trying to figure out how they did all these right. sea crossings. They're, they're the ones scratching their heads. We're not. It yeah. totally goes along with what we would expect yeah. starting with the Bible's history. Well, we're out of time. And this next we article, uh, we're waiting. We're not doing that one until next week because that is a total genetics article. And oh, yeah. Yeah, this it. is really. <laughs> hey, do you guys want to stick around for an extra minute or two? Mm -hmm. All yeah. right. Let's okay. do it. All right, we'll do it. Uh, scientists captured DNA replication on video for the first time. Here's what it revealed. Okay, so See why a, the geneticist is so excited? <laughs> uh, I'm a molecular, molecular geneticist, which means I kind of study how things work, like how mm -hmm. do they all work in the cell. And so 
um, DNA, when it replicates, makes a copy of itself. There's what they call a leading strand and a lagging strand, okay? And without going into all the details, mm -hmm. they thought they kind of progressed at the same time, basically, at the same pace. But what they found was they don't. One strand <laughs> kind of goes yeah. at a, a regular pace, but the other strand will go really slow and then shoo, really fast and then really slow. But at the end, they're done at the same time. Okay. It's fascinating. And it is. And, and so <laughs> we didn't know that. We just thought it just it had a regular pace, you know, even though it was mm -hmm. called the lagging strand. And we find out now it doesn't. So they're really going to they're mm -hmm. literally going to have to go back and change the textbooks now. <laughs> Which is what I Go learned figure, when the I was in school. are going to change again. <laughs> yeah, so they have to change Isn't it. Isn't it great following the Bible? It, it never changes. Yeah, but what <laughs> got me was, as I kept reading this article, they kept saying, well, it's more chaotic. It's more random. It's unorganized. And I'm like, what are you talking about? These strands still finish at the same time. There's another protein they described that literally unzips the DNA. Mm -hmm. It only goes so far ahead. It's kind Wait of checking. It's to catch up. It's and, checking back mm -hmm. to see how far it's progressed so it doesn't get too much unwound at once one time. How is that chaotic and disorganized yeah. and random? It's a brilliant um, design that, when you look at it. That's a brilliant design yeah. is what that is. And so anyway, so it's very, very cool being able to see this for the first time and rewriting textbooks and what we've all learned, so wow. to speak, at that's least geneticists incredible. have learned. So, all right, so we're out of we time. Out Thanks of time. for sticking with us. Um, and we will see you back on Thursday at two o'clock. All right, God bless. You want to tell them we're going to be out here? Yeah, we'll be out here for a few minutes. Right. So. Right. Bodie and Dr. Purdom will be outside in the lobby to speak with you if you